Hi, this is Karen McKee, retired scientist and author, with another video about scientific writing. Everyone recognizes the opening sentence of A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. That beginning makes an indelible first impression and announces that the author is about to unfurl a fascinating story. There are many other great examples of memorable first sentences in the literary world, but the point I want to make is that first sentences, whether in a novel or a scientific paper, are important because they capture the reader's attention and set the stage for what comes after. How many times have you sat down to read a journal article and found the opening statement to be uninteresting, uninspiring, or trite? How often do such papers go on to surprise you with their insights? Given the competition for space in journals, authors cannot ignore the fact that they not only need outstanding data, they must write memorable papers. And if they are smart, they will start off with a compelling sentence or two. Scientific authors are taught to use expository writing and passive voice when preparing scholarly articles for publication. Information is presented objectively as a series of facts, often without any hint of human involvement, such as the samples were analyzed rather than we analyzed the samples. The ostensible purpose of such writing is to convey a sense of objectivity unencumbered by human biases. In contrast, narrative writing uses descriptive elements to create a vivid image in the reader's mind. The two types of writing are not mutually ex exclusive, however. A scientific paper can include narrative elements designed to enhance the reader's comprehension and subsequent recall of the material. One place to use narrative is at the beginning of a paper. A narrative opening passage sets the stage for the reader by using a vivid description, active versus passive voice, sensory language, or an appeal to the reader's curiosity, to name a few techniques. Recent research assessed narrative structure in 732 abstracts of journal articles about climate change by looking for the following features. A vivid description of when and where the research took place. A first-person narrative perspective. Sensory language. Use of conjunctions, which reveal a, a logical order. Repetition or reference to prior statements, which enhances connectivity appeal to the reader, such as explaining how society might benefit from the research. Let's look at an example from a paper published in Frontiers in Earth Science, which describes a new model to explain how coral reefs build vertically. Here are the first two lines of the introduction. Swimming over the surface of a coral reef, it's not difficult to imagine that successive generations of coral would produce an interlocking framework and over time lead to simple vertical reef accretion. This assumption of what you see on the surface is what you get in the interior underlies all major explanations of how reefs develop. This narrative opening is effective for three reasons. First, by conjuring an indelible image in the reader's mind of what they might see swimming over a coral reef, the authors draw the reader into their narrative right at the beginning of the paper. Second, these first sentences articulate a conflict to be resolved, which is a key move in crafting a scientific story and is a great way to pique the reader's curiosity and keep them reading. Third, the initial sentences in this paper effectively prepare the reader for an alternative explanation for vertical reef development, which is that hurricanes play a role through non-biogenic depositional processes. Another way a narrative beginning may be achieved is by providing historical context for the research. Here's an example from the journal Nature entitled, Tail Assisted Pitch Control in Lizards, Robots, and Dinosaurs. This is the first sentence of the abstract. 
In 1969, a paleontologist proposed that theropod dinosaurs used their tails as dynamic stabilizers during rapid or irregular movements, contributing to their depiction as active and agile predators. In addition to the mention of a historical figure in the field of paleontology, this sentence uses active voice and expressive diction. The sensory language used throughout the abstract is a hallmark of narrative writing. A final approach that I'll mention is to begin a paper with a sentence that makes a startling or counterintuitive statement or points out a controversy in the field. Here are a few examples from the journal Nature. The tropical forests of Borneo and Amazonia may each contain more tree species diversity in half a square kilometer than do all the temperate forests of Europe, North America, and Asia combined. There were several surprises that came out of the first Perry Jove encounter of NASA's Juno spacecraft with the low altitude regions of Jupiter's polar auroral regions. During 2015 to 2016, record temperatures triggered a pan-tropical episode of coral bleaching, the third global scale event since mass bleaching was first documented in the 1980s. These examples all effectively grab the reader's attention and explain in clear and vivid language what topic the paper addresses and why it's important. Such sentences are not always easy to write and require some thought, but raise the reader's comprehension by putting the research into a broader context. In conclusion, with some thoughtful changes in language, the scientific author can craft articles that are more enjoyable to read, more memorable, and easier to comprehend. Just as the first sentence in A Tale of Two Cities foretells an intriguing literary tale, the beginning of a scientific paper should draw the reader in and prepare them for an equally engrossing experience. Thanks for watching, and if you found this information helpful, don't forget to like my video.